Hey guys, this is Tom with DraftMagic.com, and I'm back for another video here with a new Pure Steel deck. I'm very excited about how it's been doing. Just played a match against Solar Flare and just um, won it in three games, and was able to live through three Day of Judgments to come back to win the game. So very, very excited with how this deck's been doing, and really happy with the inclusion of Hero Blade Hold. I think it has a lot more threat value now, um, a little bit less combo oriented. And what I ended up doing is I, I changed the mana base in a pretty pretty important way. Um, being able to shave the number of islands, you know, really cut out a lot of the, the dead draws that I had been experiencing back when I was running Snapcaster Mage and Vapor Snag and Ponder. And just, you know, I really kind of felt there was just sort of too much blue in the deck. Um, and basically, you know, going down to just two Trinket Mages I think helps just because it sort of unclogs the three drop slot, allows us to have room for more swords, Mirren Crusaders, and a smoother curve here, and then at the same time, you know, we're able to still have that nice turn one champion play. Um, it allows us to play a second Merlin Hall, and I up the land count to 23, just with the inclusion of four Hero Blade Hold. And, I mean, just the threat value alone of the Hero Blade Hold, um, it's just, it's so much better, I think. So... Really excited, and we're going to go ahead and play another two-man queue here, and we'll see how it goes. So looks like we are on the draw. Uh, very happy with this opening. This opening is quite good. Looks like we're up against um, either black-white tokens or blue-white humans. And kind of interested to see how this you know, how this build is going to go with uh, the humans. So I think, you know, we can go ahead and drop out collar here. Uh, we might want to get more value off pure steel. But, you know, I think our plays are going to be pretty packed here for the next couple turns. I mean, we're most likely going to go turn two pure steel, turn three sword. Um, you know, and then if we have the, the metalcraft in play already, I think it's going to be a little bit more effective. You know, um, at the same time, we could also just go you know, turn two Paladin, turn three Crusader. Um, so I think it is actually worth getting the collar on the table right away. You know, I think if our hand was was a lot less filled, you know, it might be worth him trying to get the extra value. But especially up against humans, you, know, you don't have a lot of time to, you know, react. And be able to have that Metalcraft immediately really, really helps. Also, with Thalia, stuff gets more expensive right away. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and drop Pure Steel to slow down the, the Traveler shenanigans. Here we're hoping just to go land into Mirren Crusader, because um, I mean it's really our only play at this point. Uh, Fiend Hunter is unfortunate, but I'm glad that he got the Fiend Hunter on the Paladin versus the Crusader. And, the, and the, the, the Blue Out Humans is an interesting match, just because, you know, I mean, obviously Talia can really just just destroy our deck here, so it's, if we're a little bit land light, it, it gets pretty ugly. Luckily, he doesn't have any champion shenanigans to go with it, at least not yet. But he is running Geist of St. Traff, so this is looking pretty grim already. And this might just be game here. Um, we potentially might be able to stabilize this gather. I don't think so. I think this is already game. So, you know, the one thing, the, the one problem with this deck is, you know, Talia really does punish our slow draws here, um, or land light draws, and yeah, that's already game. Okay, so against blue white humans, let's have a look. What's our plan? First of all, we don't need Grabdigger's Cage. We definitely want to bring in a Blue Ring, Fiend Hunter, um, Relic Order, just because there's going to be a lot of fighting back and forth between O-Rings and that kind of shenanigans. Um, we definitely want to have access to Life Staff and probably timely reinforcements. Um, so kind of with this in mind, I mean, now 
the collar combo is actually quite powerful here if we can get it active. The, the downside is that um, Talia makes Paladin have fits. Um, so let's have a look. What do we want to cut here? I think you know that our three draft slot has just gotten absolutely monstrous at this point. But I mean, you know, a lot of the spells we have here are really powerful. Like Mirror Crusaders is, is still very strong. Um, Honor the Pure is very important. You know, so I think at this point we kind of almost have to choose if we want to go for the the combo against them or if we want to go for more of like a heavy late build kind of thing. Um, I don't know, actually, to be honest. You know, I, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions on, you know, what kind of the better play is here in terms of, you know, what we should go for in terms of going for the combo or should we go for, you know, more of a heavy play. I'm not sure we can fit in timely reinforcements. It's also going to be worse with Talia. Um, let's see, what else do we want to shave here? Um, I gather is still very good. Um, hmm. I mean, if we're going to go for the combo, maybe like Shave 2 Crusader. Hmm. Like, if we're going to cut Gather, you know, the champion becomes much less good. Um, so, like, if we cut Champion and maybe one Gather, and we still have Honor the Pure. I think it's really important here, but now we're down to 16 creatures, so maybe we put like an R up here and then we gather in. And we still have access to the big guys. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure about the sideboard against this matchup, to be honest with you. Here we, we definitely have the combo, you know, we are on the play. The, the problem with this is if we don't get the land on turn two, and I think this is actually a very strong hand. Um, if we get one more land, I think this actually can can end up taking it for us. So this might be a greedy keep, but I think this might be a correct keep. So here we definitely want to go ahead and uh, lead out with one of these assuming tallies coming down. So now we're really just praying for the land on this turn, because if we have the land, we can get the Mortar Pod. Unfortunately, did not. Um, so, instead we're just going to try to get the combo going. Land there could have been the difference between winning and losing this game, to be honest. We can Mortar Pod his guy. Okay, so now, as much as I'd love to drop Paladin first, we have to kill his champion. Now we have immediate metal craft, and we can use our gather to really get there. Okay, so at this point we can go pure steel equip everything. And then next turn to start going off. And then if he like fiend hunters our guy, he o rings it and just o ring it right back. Probably has fiend hunter here. Yep, there's a fiend hunter. It's fine. Okay, now we just fiend hunter is fiend hunter.
And actually, um, yeah. <clears throat> so I was hoping to get a turn without <coughs> Fiend Hunter, and so we can start going off. Here he probably okay. He fiend hunters are fiend hunter, and then fiend hunters are paladin. So then we O ring and just do the chain right back. Maybe hopefully, hopefully he stalls on the fiend hunter combo chain. He might have like lean and relic warder, which is going to be annoying. But I think we have to go for it. Now, alternatively, what we could have do is we could actually set up double gather there first, which probably would have been a better play, to be honest. Unfortunately, we're committed. So if we'd gone like gather gather and then, you know, had it, so like, so that way we can play around his relic warder. So if we have one turn of a window, we can go off, but if he has the rock border, he just gets us. So then he goes out through the whole chain again. Good lord. <laughs> Oh, wow. So, oh, God. Yeah, so we should have definitely played it smart and just set up the combo first. So now we go through the Fiend Hunter, Fiend Hunter, Fiend Hunter combo. Luckily, we do have the O-Ring, so now we're going to do the smart play and go ahead and gather first. So we're going to get blown out again. And the next turn, set up the chain. Angelic Destiny. Okay. So now we could just and jug destiny his fiend hunter to get the fiend hunter back to get the traveler to make it fall off, which I'm fine with. I mean that way we don't get to do the pure steel combo, um, or we can just drop through a blade hold. I think they're both valid options. Um, well, let's see. So if we O-ring his fiend hunter and get back our pure steel, then we can just outright kill the traveler. Bash in. Let's see, what is that? Two, four, six, eight. So we kill his guy, he gets angelic back in hand, has no creatures on the table. We bash in for a couple damage and have hero the next turn. Otherwise, we just drop hero. Then it feels like angelic destiny again. I guess he sort of gets us. I think we do all this next turn, because we're not going to die this turn, so we just drop hero, set up for next turn, and then next turn really, really go off. Okay, so there is the O-ring, so he's going to fiend hunter, he's going to 
yeah, fifteen hundred R zero now. There's so much fifteen hundred shenanigans. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start off a very very fun fifteen hundred chain. Okay, so that is going to be good times. So I think now we're going to go ahead and we're going to O ring this Fiend Hunter, start the chain. Actually, if we O ring his. Oh, I suppose it's really actually the same. So if we O ring his Relic Warrior, then we O ring his Fiend Hunter, then his Fiend Hunter. Yeah, alright. Now we want to go ahead and get that Cure Steel, kill his other Fiend Hunter, and then use that to take down the rest. Okay, so now, um, and we can get enough life off Life Staff that we don't really care about this guy. He can just sort of sit and do his own thing. Now we can go ahead and do the combo, set up the chain, and be in a good spot. and hopefully take over the game. If, if he draws Fiend Hunter next turn, it'll be somewhat annoying, but should still be fine. Now we set up for a big turn next turn. And if he doesn't have Fiend Hunter, okay, then and that's the game. So we comboed off successfully. So all kinds of hate for <laughs> just left and right Oblivion Ring, Fiend Hunter shenanigans. Um, do you want to make any changes here? I think the combo is so important that we need to have it. Um, we need Pure Steel. We need Relic Warder. Um, we need this for, for creatures. Um, we want to make room for a Moon Crusader. I think Honor the Pure is still important. I think we need to have enough creatures to get there. Ugh. We only have 16 creatures. I think I'm actually going to shave the Honor the Pure just in favor of actually guys. 
could do Crusader. Crusader works with a better sword, otherwise we could do reinforcements to try to stabilize. I think reinforcements we'll definitely be able to use maybe a little bit better. Just to give us more ammo for the combo. So this hand is okay. Um, we can try to start setting up the combo. The problem is we need both combo pieces here. Like here we just wait to reinforcements and then do um, hero. He doesn't play any creatures here, we just O-ring his honor of the pure, I think. We ideally want to take a little bit of damage here, and we'll take six. Yuck. Well, I think it's actually better to just reinforcements for the guys. And then next turn, drop hero. The problem here is like if he drops sword, we're in a really rough spot. So now we block with a soldier so that we can reinforcements again. Is that the play we want to make here? I think next turn we just want to drop hero. So we go to 14. If he drops sword next turn, we just die. Let's see. I think we die regardless if he has sword equipped. Oh, is it better to O-ring his Crusader? That's the real question. Um, hmm. Don't know. I think we definitely do want to block Crusader, but we still have to get blown out. I mean, you know, War and Peace equipped can just end the game. I think this will give us room to let's see. We go down to five cards. Four, nine, eighteen. So we get a two. <laughs> uh, if he has sword next turn, it's really, really, really rough. But I think it's worth dropping that um, hero here, and this way we can start setting up for paladin combo. Here's the Fiend Hunter, which we expected. Okay. So I think we block Crusader. Took a little bit of damage here. What is the play? We can timely reinforcements and drop collar, or we can oblivion ring his crusader, who just frightens me, and drop collar, or we can just drop hero. Problem with hero is it doesn't really do much for us. I mean, like it doesn't stop champion, it doesn't stop crusader. I mean, well, it does stop crusader <laughs> if he doesn't play another. So like if we drop hero, these bashes with everybody, what happens? If he plays a creature, we take like five, seven, nine, go to five, and then be able to gather the next turn, trade hero, hero for Mirren Crusader. Otherwise, we O-ring his Fiend Hunter, which I think is kind of maybe a little bit of a better play. Yeah, because that allows us to get more stuff on the table. If we pull in his hunter. We have too much to do and too little mana. 
Yeah, I think we do actually want to O-ring here just because... Well, I mean, then if he has, like, Relic Warder, he still gets us. In, in a much worse fashion. Um, Hero, he only, he only has O-ringer. But then again, he doesn't get to attack with Fiend Hunter. No, I think I'm just actually just gonna hero here. We're just hoping to stabilize, but yeah, being on the draw in this matchup is really kind of beating. And he does have the fiend hunter back up, so now we block, go to five. If we don't draw land, pretty much die. What we, need, what we really need in this matchup is just Wrath of God. <laughs> that would be what we need. Okay. So now our plan is to draw land. Alright. The backup plan is to... I suppose we can like timely... Well, timely doesn't really protect us here. I think we just need to gather and then drop pure steel. That like buys us a turn. I think our plan is to go to one and try to get the combo off. If he doesn't have more gas, please don't have more gas. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And the O-ring back up. Okay. Alright, so now we block, block, block three guys, go to one. Oh, yuck. Please stop playing cards. <laughs> <coughs> oh god. We definitely need to just like wrap the guy right here. I think he knows we don't have it. So the problem is I mean Wrath is really only good against this matchup. I mean it's not nearly as good against other matchups. Alright, so now what is our play? If we timely buy ourselves a little bit of time. Um, otherwise we can Fiend Hunter his Fiend Hunter to get a guy back, so then we'll have four blockers to his four creatures. And then the two of ours can live through it. I think that's actually the better play. Because we need to start... Well, otherwise we just lose guys. Yeah, I think that is actually the play. Hope to God he doesn't have a Fiend Hunter or an O-Ring. And then we need to drop Collar. We're so tight on mana. If he has, basically if he has anything here, we're dead. Okay, not that. Almost anything. Now we're just like hoping and praying to have enough time to to get back into the driver's seat. It's like if he shoves with everybody, we block block, and we have to actually block all the things we don't like blocking. Ugh. So I think here we actually have to trade Hero for Crusader, and I'm fine with that. So basically we... Because we don't want to kill his Traveler, I and mean we really do not want to kill his Traveler. Otherwise we could like keep Hero alive. I don't honestly think keeping Hero alive is worth not having the Crusader dead. Okay. So like hero trades with Crusader. 
There we go, like this. Whereas we keep Fiend Hunter, everything else dies. Then we can time the reinforcements. And try to stabilize, is that right? So then he still has four guys, and we have four guys. Oh, yuck. Otherwise, if we O-ring his Fiend Hunter, then we get our hero back. How does that play out? So we O-ring his Fiend Hunter, we get our hero back. So we have hero and Fiend Hunter versus his three creatures, and we still die. Um, otherwise, we keep hero and Fiend Hunter alive. Drop the other two. Then we have two to his five. If we drop reinforcements, we gain some life, keep the heroes in play. I think we just need two reinforcements. Then next turn we lose a bunch of guys. We go back down to his Fiend Hunter. No, we don't. Okay, so I think this is actually the play we want. We can take some damage next turn. Thank god. Okay, so now... There's the land. We really, really, really needed that land. I mean, it's not going to change much, but basically it's going to allow us to... First of all, we drop reinforcements. The O-ring does not save us here. And then we equip one of the little dupers with the collar so we can start getting some extra creatures. We just set. Please don't play O-Ring. <laughs> oh man, Fiend Hunter really hurts here. Oh god, this might be game again. So Fiend Hunter for Fiend Hunter, and then he starts the chain all over. What happens here? See, so Fiend Hunter is our guy with the collar. Most likely. Yep. Um, block here. Go to one. Oh, yuck. <clears throat> yep. If there was ever a time we needed to wrap a guide, it's now. Alright, so now, what do we do? O-Ring is Fiend Hunter, Fiend Hunter, the Fiend Hunter, to get the hero back. So that way we have, I don't think it's enough is the problem. Let's see, we have four creatures to his, no, we have three creatures to his four, and then we have four with the Moreland Hunt. Okay. Hanging on. I know you guys are with me on this, we're hanging on just barely. Seriously painful. So now we fiend hunter is fiend hunter. If we win this, this is going to be like the most epic game I've played in a while. Alright, now we use Merlin Haunt to make a creature, block everything, s try to stabilize at one and come back and win this game. Please don't play. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, and that definitely is the game. We, we can't deal with four Fiend Hunters. Or, what is that? Three? One, two, three. Four Fiend Hunters. <laughs> well, we tried but unfortunately couldn't quite stabilize. Yeah, and starts the chain, and that is the game, unfortunately. So, not too bad. Um, I mean, you know, obviously we you don't usually expect to run into all four Fiend Hunters in the top 
20 cards of a deck. But, you know, I think that, that the humans matchup, at least for the moment, uh, online is going to be not that common. Um, I know that humans has really kind of developed into a deck. Um, Red-white humans, you know, green-white humans, a number of other humans decks for standard um, in, uh, in live, just because of the uh, cards from Avacyn Restored. But, you know, I mean, I don't think that many of those decks do run four Fiend Hunters. I think it's like a two, two of Fiend Hunter. Um, you know, so, so the humans matchup is kind of rough there, but I still think that the deck is a little bit better than it had been. So, we will see you guys next time.